Okay. All right. So this is the website we were talking about, credcred.com. But yeah, I have found it when I was trying to figure out like what, like how can I, um, how can I, uh, what's it called? It teach APIs and credcred.com. Good thing it exists. It basically is a place where you can practice APIs um, because they they host their they host like a um, like a service on the back end, like like a service somewhere else or whatever. And then like when I guess whenever you go to their website, they give you this thing and this thing right here is called an API key. It's basically it's basically um, something that tells them who you are. So it's, it's specific to the browser. And when I mean browser, I mean like literally if I if I opened up um like Firefox or like um what else do I have here? Safari, it can tell which browser you're on. Did I uninstall it? <laughs> yeah, I think I did. Um yeah, I think I uninstalled um Safari. What's this? But it's all good. But either way, it reads it, it knows that it's you by reading the data from your browser and it assigns you an API key. And this API key gives you the ability to use their services. And literally the reason they have this API key is so, they, so that they can keep track of who's using it. They don't just want like random people using their stuff. And, um, and also because they're able to track who you are, whenever you use the API key, they can restrict you to only using a hundred um, requests unless you want to pay for it. <laughs> and, then, and then down here, you can pay for it. But I, I highly like not recommend paying for any of this stuff, to be honest. I would just, I would just um, go to, a, if you run out, just go to a different browser and just, they'll give you a whole nother API key or go to it from your phone or something like that. And then you would just use the API key. Um, but yeah, this, and this is literally another example of how you can make money <laughs> as a developer. Make one of these like, like this, this is literally like a practice website. Like you, you don't, no serious company um, is gonna use this. Like they're just not, maybe startups or maybe like like projects, um, like maybe if you went to like a hackathon or something like that, you will use this website for something like that. But like you see, you see they're actually making money. Like even though it's only $2, $3, and like $5, I'm sure there's a lot of people actually using this website. So these numbers will add up like quick like how much money they bring in. Um, so yeah, this is correctcred.com. Um, can somebody tell me what's the difference between get, put, post, and delete? Like what, what, um, what, are, what are each of these things um, supposed to do? I'm finna cheat. So um, post creates an identity or an entity represented. Ah, oh. <laughs> ah, nah. But go ahead, I'll put it back. No, I was, <laughs> no, I was, <laughs> no, I was so I, I get confused between post and put. Uh, but yeah, post uh, puts your uh, what is the asset onto the server get uh what get calls your asset from the server so you can use it put puts it uh updates it on the server and then delete deletes it from the server yeah now the reason some of those got ids is actually because when you post something you just add it to the server so you don't need an id it gets a signed id the mm -hmm. first get doesn't have an ID because it has to do with uh it's gonna uh read all of the uh entities anyway, so it doesn't need an ID. You only need IDs when you specify uh an entity, and if you don't want to delete everything, you gotta have an ID. So they just make sure that you don't have the ability to delete everything. Mm -hmm. So that's why you gotta use ID for delete, put, and get. But you right. don't forget. <laughs> all the time if you want to call everything then you don't have to use it that's what i figured out when i was uh reading these little you dig so mm -hmm. descriptions prior to like prior to going through that have you seen this before like this concept before anywhere um it seemed like uh 
what do you call it? HTML uh text. Honestly, the way it the way it's formatted, it looks like HTML. Yeah. The, these are just like so th this this is good to notice because the oh um I see what you mean, like tags or whatever. Yeah, these address. Just like parameters. But yeah, the reason I asked, have you seen this concept before is because it, it sounds like you understand it. Um Either, either you did some digging or, or whatever and like um, to try to understand it or I did a, or I did a good job in the course. Either way, <laughs> it's good that you know it. Good job uh, in the course. Yeah. And the description and, and you are the only reason I understand it. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. you, said, you said you was getting confused with post and put, but you you explained the difference. Like put is literally just update. That's it. Update something that's already there, and you you put it you didn't um it was you hit the nail on the head when you was talking about these IDs like like you understand why we have like these IDs here, so yeah, and post you know just creates something new. Mm -hmm. You're gonna see it. these these four like verbs or whatever like um get put post and delete um those are like a standard. Like the way the way that um, we describe them or the way they're, they're using it here is by like um, convention. Now, sometimes, like like um, technically, you can you can delete stuff with a get request or like a post request or something like that. But you're but when I say like this is by convention, like you you can code it you can code it to do whatever you want it to do. But to keep it understandable is good to go with like the actual definitions so it, whenever you like start working for a job you might see one of these one of these used in like the wrong way like i've seen post used to, to delete stuff and like a lot of uh, like sometimes some of that stuff happens because like the post will actually update something and then delete something after that like is there's always some like um there can get it can get like um like mixed or whatever like crossed with the definitions of, of each of these things but for the most part like they should do exactly what um they say they're supposed to do post create something get it just reads something um put updates and delete delete something <laughs> I, I don't know if i said it in the course but there's more than just these but these are the only ones that you're ever going to see like um there's like a list of like 20 of these like 10 or 20 of these things but these are the most common and the only ones you see no no one um no one uses the other ones um well i haven't seen it being used <laughs> i shouldn't say no one uses them because they exist for a reason but um you're not going to see them used or rarely anyway so let's go oh any questions on these um <laughs> these uh this api uh this a api stuff did anybody like get confused with the videos or like did something just not make sense maybe i can like dig a little deeper into it okay. well if you understand it that's good if you haven't already went through it, I highly suggest it because like not knowing how to do this, if you go to an interview and you don't know how to do this, they're going to look at you like, yeah, um, well, like you're, they'll, they'll tell you some excuse. <laughs> so I was saying, they'll straight up tell you that you, you're not really qualified because you can't, you can't be a developer and not know how to do this. It's just one of those things that's just, that just comes with it. So um, let me... I'm gonna pull up the, the inspirational quote and I'll go through it. Um, the actual solution and I'll ask the class, what do this do, what do that do? You know, how, like we did last time. Um, where is it? Inspirational quote, download the complete code. <clears throat> Thank you. 
match. I don't think that's it. Um, I think that is it actually. Put that inspirational quote here. Okay. All right. So it's only twenty nine lines of code ish. Um, let's go through this. At first, I'm I'm gonna pull it up just so that we can see what it's actually doing. <clears throat> Here. Okay. So this is um this is the inspirational quote here. Basically, every time we refresh the page, and I'll I don't know if I went through the um I'm not sure if I went through the, the console to show this in the in the course. <laughs> if I didn't, then then it's fine. I, I'll show you now. Um, so I'm gonna go. So in in the dev tools, right? If you go to the network tab, the network tab shows you everything that's being like every resource that you're using, like every like outside resource, every like the HTML files, the JavaScript files all of the resources that you use for your, your app or website or whatever you want to call it. I'm just going to say software for your software. Um, but you have to refresh it. So if I refresh it, it shows, um, it shows the resources that I'm using. If I click all, I click all right here. It shows like all of the resources here. It shows HTML file. Let me, let me detach this so we can get a better view of this. We got an HTML file here. We can even preview it. This is all the HTML, like without any um, CSS, obviously, and it's not much at all. It brings in the CSS file, that whole CSS file here, the reset CSS, all of those JavaScript files that we have inside of the JavaScript folder is coming in. All of the images are here. Um, all of these are coming in. And what's this? Oh, fonts, all of the fonts that I'm using. I'm using Google fonts. So all of that is coming in. Like literally every single resource that I'm using is coming in here. And I'm not sure what this is. Oh, this is, this is, this gave me an error because this is, this is that video. So you can see it as an MP4. If I go here and open this up, um, this is that video that it's trying to bring in. I'm not sure why it gives me, okay. So it gave me an error here, and I guess here it 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 pulled it again. So we're able to, we're able to get that image in here. But what I wanted to show you, um, if we click fetch um, XHR, this showed it, this shows us all of like um, the API calls. I'm not sure why it's showing me this 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 video right here, but the API call that we made was two quotes. Um, now I'm gonna go to this, I'm gonna go to this website, but basically we reached out online to this resource. We made a get request. We just said get request gives us back something. So um, we made a get request to get whatever is at whatever is at this resource or this like server somewhere. We're just gonna call it um a resource or a service. If I go to preview, I can see everything that that resource gives me back. Um, it gives me back basically an array. We can see that this is literally an array. Um, and this is how an array looks if it's like huge or whatever. Um, we can see it's broken down in, into hundreds. It's sectioned off like 99 or whatever. If I open this up, um, we can see that it's given us an array of objects. I open this up. And this object has an author and it has some text. Uh, basically, what we're getting back are all of the quotes from the resource. I also want to show you that the get request is something that we all have done before. Like, even if you didn't know you did, you did a get request before, you've done a get request. Like, if you use the internet, you did a get request. Um, um, this is a get request. Um, whenever I put something in a browser, 
literally, if I press enter here, if I go to facebook.com, I go to instagram.com, I go to google.com, that is a get request. You're making a get request by putting the URL into the browser. That's a get request. And um, I put it in here and now I'm able to see everything that that huge array. Um, let's put it a little bigger. This is that huge array that we saw in the network tab. And it, the huge array has all of these objects in it. And we can see like, this is a really, really big file. We can see it from here. There's a lot of stuff in here. Um, so that's something important to know that you've done a get request and so that you know, you know what a get request is. Um, and also you can make get requests from a browser basically. Now, um, with that being said, like the post, the put and the delete request, you can't do that from the browser. You got to download some software to do something like that. Um, on my computer, I have something called um, insomnia, which is a really, really good, um, some really good software. Where is it? Did I delete it? Um, Shout out insomnia cookies. Right. <laughs> I don't know if y'all been to the um to the the newer one where like they open up the um the door you gotta say like the password. Um, but um, <laughs> I have a question. Yeah. Um, because I I was actually earlier this week looking um for an image to download on a on a website, and so I I, I caught myself going to the developers tool to or going to see the, the 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 code the html code to see if i could find it but i could not find it um and um i i then use that using the dev tool that you just gave me um to to see if i could find the jpeg or png file and i couldn't find it either mm -hmm. uh, it, um, what what do you, what do you mean? I did, I guess I could maybe just go over with you after class, but I was wondering where where if you can't see it, obviously where where might it be? Um, so if you go to the dev, it should be in the dev tools. Um, so if you go to all, you have to click all, and all of the resources that download are in here. Now sometimes images may come a little bit different. It may come in binary code. And if it comes to like binary, it's normally decoded on the app side. And the reason it, the reason we even have this this um this um like binary stuff is because it's it's almost like a zip file. It it transfers data in a in a um in a compressed like way. And it also um it also gives you the it also helps you um like um when you're using API calls, like the 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 binary is um, not binary. It's called something else. Um, I forgot what it's called, but it's called something. <laughs> it's just a series of characters or whatever. Um, that's that's normally sent all over over API calls. So you not being able to see here means that it's it's probably you probably got to decode it or whatever to be able to see it, and that's done on a on an actual website. So. Okay. That's one. That's one reason why you, you probably couldn't see it. Like I really had, here, here, I don't even. Yeah, go ahead. I, uh, how do you know when a site can be used for a call? Like, when do you know when you can use the get, post, put, delete, or any of those functions? Uh, <clears throat> on, oh, on a web page, does it have to have a certain format or? Okay, like, what? like if I would, if I went to like Facebook, like. How do I know if if I can use like the put requests and stuff like that on it? Exactly. Like, how do I know what information I can get off the site, or if there's any type of information that I can call off of a site? Right. So if I go to Facebook, um, shoot, that's probably not a good example. Let me go to Insta um, Instagram is probably not a good example. <laughs> Let me go to um, yeah. You know what? This is what I can do. So you can, so some, some websites gives you the ability to use their APIs. So I'm just going to type Facebook API and here Facebook API documentation is one of the things. 
and I can go here. So developers.facebook.com, this is where all of their like get put post delete stuff is. And you can use this to like pull your profile, like to, to make Facebook apps if you want. Um, all of this is like that or whatever. What is this? Marketing API. So you can like, you can put these into your apps and use all of these like services. It, um, yeah, you can, you can do a lot of stuff with these APIs. Um, and oh, normally- like, Oh, go ahead. I was, yeah, normally they, they, they require you to use an API key. Um, but, but yeah, um, different sites have different, um, different APIs. Instagram has an API, um, but you can get other people profiles if you want it. Um, but yeah, just look up the website and then look up like API. And if they have it, it'll come up. Uh, and so that's how I know. I, if I if the site has an API, then I can use those functions. Those uh yeah, I'm gonna call them functions for now. I think right. they methods. Are they methods? Um, they're um. What would they be called? What would the proper name for those be? Wow, I feel like I should know this. <laughs> they're um, they're just like verbs. They're just um, yeah. I'm not sure if there's an actual name. If there is, if there is. Not sure but yeah they this is facebook allowing the public to manipulate their system in a controlled manner obviously um, obviously i mean if you're a hacker then you could probably you could probably come in here and do some stuff but um yeah for us you know um in a controlled manner so um but yeah insomnia i had i had it on my computer i I don't know why I wasn't covering up when I, when I was showing it, but um, normally with these with these pieces of software, it gives you like an interface where you can put like a like a website and then as soon as this loads, you can put like a website and then like you can put like get post put delete whatever you want to use. Um, yeah, there you go. So it'll look very similar. So this is me like this is me um, testing out projects in a course like I'm um, like I have the um the inspirational quote well I named the affirmation at first because I was messing around with like an affirmation thing or uh affirmation API and so I found out you had to it had to be like a, a paid service but that's besides the point I got all of the different um like APIs here that I was thinking about using and this is a Mills API like you can you can reach out to this website I put beef here and like me putting beef, it spits out different meals that I can use with beef or I can put like chicken or like fish or whatever. And, like you can really get creative with these APIs. Like they, they're literally giving me back a, um, a thumbnail. Um, so if, like we can put this inside of like an image tag. And let me see, if I just go here to the, to the browser like see, it's just a, a picture of like the mill. So it gives me the mill. It gives me like the name and like some ID. I mean, you don't really need the ID, but yeah, it's just a fun like thing to do. I'm gonna put chicken here. But press send, it gives me a bunch of chicken mills. And these are get requests. We can see it here, get. So yeah, the, these, these are some of the other ones I was talking about. So patch is one um, options and head, but I don't, I don't really use, I don't really use those. I'm not sure what options and head is, but patch is, is supposed to be, is um, basically supposed to be something like, um, like whenever you, I think, don't quote me this, I think it's when you fix something, it, it, it kind of reminds me of a, um, of a put request. It's, it's like very similar to a put request, a patch. Um, but yeah, let me let me put that that chicken image in here. See what see what that's looking like. So that's um, um, that one looks better. <laughs> yeah. I don't know what this is in the background, but yeah, that's but yeah, a bunch of different APIs. You can you can even make a weather app. Um, this is the Pokemon API right here that I was messing around with, and we'll get to this when we get to the Pokemon app. But um, but yeah, let me not get too far 
off track. Um, Sorry, real quick. What, what was put again? Was that update or create? I forgot. Update. The update, update. Think, oh. think of, I was going to say, like, if you think of, like, when you make a Facebook post, you add in a, a Facebook post. And mm -hmm. then when you when you put something in the fridge, then you just adding it to the fridge, like you putting a, a can of pop in the fridge. You just adding it to all the other ones. That's the. It may help. Did you say pop? <laughs> Is that I what? Say, yeah, I said pop. Like okay. so, or some people say soda. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's just <laughs> my gosh. You might say pop. That's all. Because I don't yeah. like we 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 say soda over here, but yeah. <laughs> or or you can say soda pop and get and go real old. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but uh, let me see. But yeah, those these are like those requests or whatever. And obviously you can make really good apps with them. Like Uber uses, like you can make an Uber app if you want to, want to do something like that, where you can mess around with like Google API, where you can get like the map back to your app or software or whatever, and then put like different points on a map or different routes and stuff like that. Like you can get real, real creative with these with these APIs, which is why it's very important to to learn them because you can do like some really nice stuff with them. Um, yeah, I'm yeah. trying to hack. Huh? Who are you? So I was trying to hack some stuff. Mm -hmm. It's like, oh, I'm joking. I'm yeah. joking. <laughs> yeah, but um, all right. Let me get back to to that but yeah more of the story every time i refreshed i made a get request to get another um another quote i refresh this again it's going to just make another request and it's going to give me a different one every time or i should say a random one every time but now let's let's go through the code so we can break it down here okay so 30 lines of code so we have, this is that the URL. I just put it inside of a variable so that we can use it. Um, I could have put it directly in here, but it's always good practice to put your strings inside of variables, just in case you use it more than once, even though I only use the once here. Um, so can someone, I, I kind of like, um, can someone tell me like what, um, like what's happening here? Like when you look at this file, like which function fires first? Like just kind of walk me through like um, what's what's happening. I guess the first question is wh which function fires first? The date. This one? Can we, can we see the bottom of it, Isaiah? Okay. Yeah. So it's not this one. Um, so whenever we whenever we reload the page and HTML reads this file, this file does a few things. First, it sets up all of the variables and all of the functions. We see the functions being set up here. And then we can see on line 29 it calls a function. So um, yeah, anytime you see this, just know like that, that's, this is where, this is where it started. So this, uh, so get inspirational quote is the first function that fires. Um, can someone tell me in their own words, what's going on in this? Um, well, I guess the first thing I should say, what is fetch used for? Like what is fetch and, and what is used for? So aren't you like grabbing data? Yeah, yeah, but but I'm using fetch, right? Like what, mm -hmm. what is fetch? Are you retrieving, are you retrieving like uh, data from somewhere? Yeah, yeah, that's- From like yeah. a predetermined- Right. So fetch allows us to use API calls. It's a job, it's a built-in JavaScript function, just like math and well, yeah, just like all the other um, 
like built-in things like um, map and for each and, and filter and stuff like that. But yeah, fetch fetch is something you can use you can use it on its own and you can use it to make API calls. Now, um, fetch can take a few parameters. Um, it can take I believe it takes an object and you give it the URL that that you want to use. And then you also give it the method that you want to use also, which is a get request. Um, let me see if this works. I'm not sure. <laughs> I want to uh, let me refresh this. I think it's an object that it takes. It's not an object. Or well, it's, it's something. It's something like this. But when you just use it, when you just use it with just one parameter, which is just the um, just the the URL, you're making a GET request by default. You always make a GET request like that. Um, so we're making a GET request to this URL, and then we're using this this dot then method. What's the significance of of dot then? why are we able to use dot then on on this and it's that's the, this is a tough question by the way so take i'll give y'all like a minute or two to to think about that the significance of that then why y'all thinking i'm just gonna look up this fetch thing so i can figure out the other parameters that you can use is it just like the order of what's being retrieved? Yeah, it is. It is the order. It is the order. Um, so that that's that's one part of it. So there's one more part of it. Um, so yeah, it's like that. Like okay, I do this, then I do this, then I do that. That's really good. But why why are we able to use that then? Because it's an API. And you can use the dot then function on APIs, just like uh, you can with uh, promises. Right, promise. Right. So fetch is a function that returns a promise. So that's why we can use dot then. Like this, whatever is inside of this function, it's going to give us back a promise. And promises is the only thing you can use dot then on. Now. Um, nine times out of 10, anytime you see like something making API calls, it's going to give you a promise because that's because that's the only thing that makes sense for it to give you back because it doesn't know how long it's going to take for the data to come back. But yeah, anytime you see that, then just think of a promise. You're always getting a promise back. Um, so it's me... promised the URL? No, no. Promise is what this function returns back from us. Let's say like this function, right? Let's say we created this URL and it did some stuff, right? And then mm -hmm. at the end, it, it returns a promise, new promise, like something like this. And this right. promise, yeah, since this promise is being returned, this is the equivalent of writing like this, because it's giving us back a promise. And you can only use dot then on promises. So. Gotcha. OK, all right, yeah. that's it. Yeah, I'm not sure what this function has inside of it, but it's it's a, it does something like that. I can probably go to the function, actually. Yeah, yes, I can go to that function. So this stuff looks very confusing. <laughs> but we can see that this is a function. We can see the name here. And we can see that it returns a promise. Um, and we didn't, I didn't teach this. This is like, um, it's like a type or whatever. It's telling us that the promise is of type response. Just like we can have, just like numbers are of type integer or floats or strings or like, or type, the, the type of a string is a string or the, the type of an array is an object or an object is an object as well. Like this promise, the type is a response. Um, but yeah, it gives us back a promise, basically. I wish I can go to the actual yep. code for it. I can't go to the code. I was gonna say, so you can could you add to that? Um, I think I think this is giving us like um 
I'm not sure. So this this comes from okay, okay, this is inside of VS Code. VS Code has a cheat sheet of all of the different like things. Now we can't change it. Well, actually, maybe we can change it. Um I never tried. <laughs> I feel like may, maybe we can, but a lot of these things are built into the browser also. So that that's that. Um now if you really did want to change it though, since the browser, and I didn't teach this yet. Um, whenever we do like like math or like console.log, all of those things come from something called the window. The window is the browser, and the browser has fetch object on it, and you can reassign this to make it. You can make it do whatever you want. Whoa. You can um. So if I do this, and I'm calling fetch here. This is going to throw me, it's going to throw an error first of all, because I'm not returning a promise. Let me just comment all this stuff out. If I just do fetch this URL here, I'm just going to say, hey, URL. This should print out in the console, because now, now I'm going to overwrite whatever um, whatever the browser has. Let me. But, um, but it won't permanently overwrite it though, right? No, not permanently, no. Um, so it's not doing what I thought it was going to do. <laughs> um, but. Let me see, I'm not getting here. Because you didn't define it with const. Yeah, you didn't put no const on there. No, no, it's so, so window is actually an object. So window looks something like this. Oh, okay, I feel yeah. you. And it has, it has the functions and properties and stuff like that inside of it. So yeah, we even got console in here and console is an object also. And it has, it has a log method inside of it. So that's, that's why we're able to do console.log. My gosh. Yeah. So this this is it like you know where all of this stuff comes from and obviously I couldn't I couldn't show y'all I couldn't show y'all what this stuff was in the beginning because it would have made stuff more confusing but now y'all know why we use like the stuff we use and we even have have the math object inside of here and this math object has random as has math dot random so math dot random is a function within the object the math object which is within the window so. That's sick. Yeah. Um, this may actually be called doc. I think document and windows interchangeable. Let me let me just comment this out. Um, just refresh. But yeah. Document let's see window. Yeah. We can type it here and we can see everything inside of here. So um yeah, here's fetch right here. Um let's hmm. see if I can find math. Where's math? All right, closer to the bottom because it's all caps. Um, yeah, here go all the objects here. Please you can't see. control find. Um, I'm not sure. Let's try it. Control find and uh, try the. Oh. Yeah, here is some. There we go. Math. Here we go. Yes. Math is an object. There we go. Yeah, you can use a lot of stuff, a lot of built-in stuff. You can use um see so triggers here. Um we got cosine, we got um sine, tangent, got a whole bunch of stuff. This is math.seal. This is that function here. Now it, it doesn't show us like what's inside of the function, but you can see that like it's 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 accessible here. So um but yeah, it's a lot of lot of stuff, a lot of stuff in here. And obviously you're not gonna use all of these things. And remember, I was talking about decoding um, the images. You use that with this this function here, um, um, b b to uh, b to a and a to b. Like this is one of them is like encoding like an image, and one like you can decode it or something like that. And you can do it with an image or like video. There's a lot of useful stuff in here. Um, yeah, but let me. Where was I? Um, <laughs> if I go too much into a tangent, let me make sure it's not in the chat. Sorry about that. No, it's all good. Because this, I mean, knowing this stuff exists is, is, is stuff that, like, people don't really learn until they really get into it, until they really start, like, learning JavaScript. And then they discover all of this this stuff that's, like, hidden away. But, um, oh, yeah. So let me put this back. here okay 
So this is call first and um, we're basically calling like a resource and then we're using this dot then. Um, now the reason we're, we're using like dot then here and then dot then again is because this, this function that's inside of here is going to return a promise. Like this is a promise. I don't know if you remember with with arrow functions. Um, just do a quick recap. Um, if I was to say, if I was to like make a function that that does that does something like this, like literally, it's just an arrow function. It does one thing inside of here. Like it doesn't do. It doesn't like have any extra code in here. Instead of writing it like this, you can um, you can write it like this. You can get rid of the the um, the curly brackets and. Let's see. You can get rid of the return also. And this is this is the exact same thing as what I just had. Well, let me let me put them side by side. One of those shortcuts. Um, that's what this is. This is the parameter, and it's, it's just standard because it's already defined. But yeah, this is this is the parameter, and this is what's being returned from the function. And whatever this returns is actually a promise which is why we're able to use dot then again on top of that. So, so this returns a promise. So at, after we use fetch, fetch gives us back something called a, a readable stream. And a readable stream is um, basically like, um, it's basically like chunks of data. Like let's, let's say for example, like, like this, so this this gives me back that big giant um, array, right? Let me go back to the um, network here. So this this gives me back this this array, but this array don't come all together. It comes in pieces. It may give it give me back like the first hundred, maybe give me like the next like two hundred or whatever. And the reason the reason it gives you back those chunks like that is it, just think of it as like something loading on your computer. Like if something is loading, like it's literally loading in chunks. So whenever we're whenever we're we're requesting some data, it's going to give us back in chunks, almost like it's loading. So that that's what this does. That's the, that's what that's what this is. This is a readable string, the response. And whenever the response all the way comes back from the server, it's gonna it's gonna um it's gonna fire this like it's it's gonna um this dot JSON here basically waits for the readable stream to come all the way back. It waits for all of the pieces of the thing to come back before it gives it, it gives you back the data. So that's why we have this, that's why it returns a promise because we don't know how long it's gonna take to come back. So, um, so we have another dot then here. And by the time we get the actual data, this is actually what this thing returned, um, which is the data. And let me, let me quickly show you all how that looks. Literally, the, the only reason I'm really breaking this down <laughs> the way I am is because class would have ended like very quickly because there's not much code here. So it's this opportunity to just break this stuff down even further. So I'll put a debugger here and we're going to see this readable stream. So let me refresh. Uh, Press this. Okay, so we're here. Hover over this. We can see um, that this is a readable string. The body of the response is a readable string, and we we can't obviously we we can't see nothing in here. It has a bunch of like properties and methods that we can use on this, but essentially it's it's not something that we can like see or like something that that's usable on our end until it takes it into this JSON. Um, into this JSON method and gives it gives it back to us as data. Now I'm gonna put this this debugger here and press play again. And if I hover over this, this is all that data that came back that we saw inside of the network tab. All of those quotes. So from here, <clears throat> what I'm doing is I'm getting a random index from this um, from this function. Remember how we, I, I'm gonna go into it just so we can, and I, I'm passing in data.link by the way, because I wanna pass in like a number. So I wanna get, get a random number 
and we've done this before. Um, so we have a number here and we're using math.random and math.floor to get us a random number between zero and this number, not including this number. So, so 1642 will be the highest we can go. And that random index is 1389. And with that random index, we're able to use this to get a random, um, a random quote. So data at um, 1389. So let's pretend, yeah, I think that was it. So, how do I, okay, here we go. This is data at 1389. And we're getting the text out of that. Um, I love my past. I love my present. Yeah, I love my present. Okay. Um, and we're using get by ID. We all know what that does. It's going to get something by ID. And this is a, this is in the util folder. And we're going to set the inner text to the text of this. You can see how we did all this stuff on the same line. And we didn't have to do all this stuff on the same line the way we did. But it's just convenient to just put it all there like that. So. Oh. I'm gonna hit play. And I'll go back to it's here. It's here. Open this up. Yeah. Here we are. Like it's it like it was more <laughs> more to the quote than I than I saw. I probably had to scroll down, but yeah, this is that same quote that we brought back. And literally every time we refresh it, it's going to do the exact same thing. So to recap, to recap, like what's very important here is, um, oh, and obviously assess the date too. I forgot, I forgot about that. So af after we, um, so whenever we get into this function, it assess the date first, and we're, we're just using the date object. Um, And just and just taking out like the month and the day. Y'all can go through this through the through the video to see the breakdown of this. But the most important thing here is are these are these um, API calls. Um, like knowing that this comes back as a readable stream, like you never you never have to use a readable stream. You you just gotta remember to to put put it like this or whatever. And let me let me put this back how we saw it before. Uh, we had it like like this, and um, yeah. So you gotta remember to put this part here, and then do another dot then to get back the data, and that's that's only for fetch. So fetch fetch does that that kind of way. Um, so and go ahead. Yeah. So what about uh, I think it's parse integer or parse and you know uh, that you use when you use a. Uh, the JSON parse function. Oh, yeah. Wait, you mean um, JSON.parse? There you go, JSON.parse. So yeah, is that is this response dot JSON the same? Because I know JSON.parse turns the data or turns the string to something back to data to something right. that it could use. Right. Exact same concept. Yeah, I'm glad you made that connection. Yeah, it's the exact same thing. Yeah, parse transforms something. This dot JSON transforms that readable stream to an actual um, array. Usable data. So can I can I be uh, switched out at will? Yeah, you can you can switch this out if you want to do something else with the readable stream. You can. You know I mean, like JSON dot parse and, and then the dot the dot JSON. Oh, you're saying put parse here? I mean, no, just. Yeah, yeah, actually, yes, yes, dot parse, yeah. I'm not, sh I'm honestly not sure what that's gonna do, but let's see. <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe it's another um, a refresh. Um, Big gotta, yeah, not a function. So, but yeah, I mean, the equivalent parse is just that that dot JSON. It gives us back, it gives us back JSON, basically, and mm -hmm. JSON can be an object or an array. That that's the structure of like JSON. It can be like this as a, an array or um, as an object with like a bunch of like stuff inside of it or whatever. Mm. But it's normally an array of objects. 
like this is like standard is always an array of well most most of the times it's it's an array of objects so mm. okay um, yeah oh and what time is it let's see and one thing since we got five minutes one thing i want you to notice is like remember how i told you all like this this is interchangeable like when i put that debugger here like i had to put i had to put it back to this form because there's no way for me to put a debugger in here i can't i can't put a debugger here and because it's going to give me an error that's that's why i had to i had to put those curly brackets back jump down to the next line you know, and then put the debugger here so anytime you want to debug something that's in this format, you got you just got to remember to to put it back to convert it back to this to this format, which does the exact same thing. It just looks a little bit different, but you're able to put that debugger inside of there. Yeah. So, um, any questions? <laughs> So um, I will, so um, let me see. So on Sunday, right, we are going to, where is, so I want everybody to make sure you understand API calls. Um, and if you have questions, like, you know, meet up as a group or, you know, ask me or whatever. But so um, on Sunday, we're going to do joke app. I'm gonna just go through this really, really fast, like in the in, a, in like ten minutes or something like that, probably less than that. And then as a class, y'all gonna do Pokedex together. And both of these are API related, so you know, make sure you understand APIs. Um, there's no video for either one, so um, I mean, you can try it on your own. We have the starter code here, and we got the we have the the complete code here as well. Um, you can try it on your own. I think I think if you understand inspirational quote, you should be able to do joke and Pokedex. So, but yeah, we're gonna we're gonna do this in class on Sunday either way, and then um and then we'll spend probably three days doing CRUD. I'm 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 gonna try to get down try I'm gonna try to get it down to two days, and this is not until like next until next week's Tuesday. We're gonna do the CRUD store, which is more API stuff. But it's more involved because now we gotta um now we're gonna be like doing a lot of different stuff. We're basically gonna gonna be switching a lot of different screens. Uh, we'll get to that when we get to that though. Um, so if you don't have any questions, I'll see you Sunday. Um I'll stay for 10 minutes to answer any questions. And I'll stop the recording now. Thank you.